Um, so my name is Melinda Rhodes and all of you know me and I know all of you. And I've been with the foundation for about nine years now. And um, I have my co-host here, Katie Torgerson, who's been with the foundation, what, eight years? Eight years, time's flying when you have fun. Both truly love our jobs. And we, uh, one of our favorite parts is we get to work with all of you, sight and hearing chairs. I'm sure we'll have more joining us, but um, we're just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna share my screen and what we're gonna do is just go through the packet and um, kind of talk about things that are new. And if you have any questions, just interrupt me or um, you can send a chat and Katie, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to see chats come in. Um, so I did, a, I highlighted in the letter going out some of the, the main changes and a big change that you're gonna see is changes in the referral system. So we've gone through several referral systems since I've been here and we've been using the Google um, voice uh, system for a while and it, it had its pros and cons. Um, and we couldn't have changed it um, any sooner because literally about two weeks before we were um, switching over, they no longer would allow us to listen to the voice messages. So um, that was really, that was about to throw a big stick in our spoke. So um, I don't know how, but stars aligned and we switched it just in time. Um, so the referral system now is available online on the, um, the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation's website. And um, so folks need to go online to make the referral. Uh, we've been getting some questions about what if somebody doesn't have access to a computer. Um, you know, I think in this day and age, a lot of the people we serve are going to have access to a computer, either through a friend, a neighbor, a local library, um, or a um, social worker. Um, but those of folks who don't, um, they can always call our front line and they can leave a message. But we're hoping that folks will use the referral system online because it's really concise. We think it's going to cut down on a lot of errors. Um, we know that we were having our... Um, our volunteers and staff who were tirelessly listening to messages and, and trying to um, transcribe them for you to make your jobs a little easier. We know those transcriptions weren't always, always great. It was sort of like, oh gosh, which, which one's worse, reading the Google transcription or reading our transcription? So thanks for bearing with us. We hope that this referral system is gonna make your lives a lot easier. So this is a, um, an example of how it looks and I'm gonna assume that most of you all have actually received referrals now from this system because a lot of you are in clubs that receive a lot of uh, referrals. So you can see it just, um, it's gonna address you by name. Uh, our incredible guru here, Matt Phillips, who many of you know through our school vision screening program helped set this up. I looked up in the corner of the sky and I said, Matt, I would like this to happen. And he made it happen and wrote all the code. So all of the um, sight and hearing chair information is there and we literally get a referral and um, my great coworker, Noel, pushes a button and it sends it to you. So um, if you receive, as always, if you receive a referral that's not for your area, just go ahead and um, you can forward it to myself or Noel or Katie or any of us, and we'd be happy to get it to the correct club. Um, but uh, it's gonna tell you who's making the request. Uh, it's um, a lot of times it's somebody calling on behalf of a family member, a neighbor, or it's a caseworker. So um, that was a big problem in the past because they'd leave their address and that would be really tough for us. So now we have the option to um, have them let us know who's calling on behalf. And then you get all this great information. Um, and we are also working on trying to get address verification so that when somebody puts in their address, that it actually um, checks it with Google or with another um, similar uh, um, option, a verification option, so that you're actually going to get a verified address which I think is gonna be really helpful too. So you may be able to just use this information to just send your application um, and go ahead and cut down a lot of time and effort. Um, it also gives you the type of hearing, a uh, type of assistance needed. And then there's a section with um, you know, further sort of information, which is helpful for you because if, if it's not cut and dry, they don't just need glasses. They say, well, I have a prescription or I have glasses waiting for me or I need special this, I need that. You can sort of, go in and you can talk to that person and monitor and sort of you know, go through that with them. Um, and then um, we, I wanna just make a mention that diversity, equity, and inclusion is really, really important. I know that you all know this because I work with you all, but all of our communities look so different. Um, you know, Mike uh, McKinney is gonna have a, a different population than my Lions Club at Portland Lloyd Lions Club. 
who's going to have a different population they serve and in, in, in McMinnville with Penny. So it's important that we're all really mindful of the of the population and, and the communities that we're serving and that we're making sure we're bridging sort of gaps. Um, we realize that language barriers are a big issue. Um, you know, I don't know many of you who speak Mandarin or, you know, who speak uh, Spanish. And so, you know, it's important for us to have that as an option for you. And so I want to let you know that we're working really hard to find uh, um, a, a, a sort of a, um, an option that Lions Clubs will be able to sort of work with the foundation when they have somebody who's not a native English speaker to be able to help them through that process. Because it's really important that if somebody doesn't speak English as their native language, that they should still be able to receive assistance for, for these services. It's incredibly important to us. We hope it's important to you as well. Um, so the other um, changes that we are um, talking about here too is our community health screening program. Um, so many of you have participated in community health screenings in the past where we go out uh, with local, we partner with local agencies, we screen for vision, um, for blood glucose, for, um, you know, for uh, glaucoma. And um, uh, Steve, you know, our over on Klamath, you, you've, I know, worked with us with those, that screening program. Well, you know, the pandemic threw a big wrench sort of in that uh, program. It's been really tough for us. With our school vision screening programs, we're able to safely screen children at a six feet distance. With a lot of the screenings we do with our community screening program, we're not able to do that. You have to get really up close and personal to do a glaucoma test or glaucoma screening or to do use the autorefractor or you know um, help somebody pick out readers. It's just been really difficult for us. And so that program is still on pause and it may, um, it, it may really just take a, a shift and, and change. We're really focusing on some of the other community programs that we do. We partner with KCI Institute, Pacific, University, you know, we're looking to partner more with um, Devers and some of these other great, um, you know, um, uh, medical facilities that we work with. And we want to be able to go around the state and really target populations that are in truly in need and, and take these services to them. And we don't want to just offer a screening. We want to give them the whole continuum of care. We want to make sure that if they need assistance, you know, we're going to connect them with a, an op ophthalmologist. We're going to connect them with our patient care program. We're going to connect them with a pair of glasses. So we want to make sure that, you know, it's a more robust um, uh, program. And um, so at this time, just let you know, you let your clubs know, please, uh, that we're not going to be screening, um, scheduling any community screenings at this time. We also updated the LEAP ROAR and patient care program applications. Thanks for your patience as I was trying to send those out. Thanks for Carol and some of the other folks who caught some of those mistakes. And I'm sure I've got a few more on there. I don't know how many times you can look at those darn things and still find a mistake, but um, hopefully they're looking a lot better. And, and I'd love, um, I just actually received an application from, I think uh, may have been from Carol and it was one of the new ROAR applications. So. Thanks for already getting those out in circulations. If you've already printed off a stack from last year, please just use those. You know, we don't want you to waste any resources, but once you're ready to print more out, please print the new applications out. So we've got the table of contents here and we just kind of do a frequently asked questions. And I'm not sure if all of you have had a chance to read these. Um, you know, there's sort of questions we have at the end of the fiscal year you know, we're out of funds and more calls are coming in. What do I need to do? We get this a lot. So folks will reach out to us and say, can you just, can you just tell folks that we're out of funds and our club can't accept requests anymore? Unfortunately, the way the system is set up, we're just not able to do that. Um, we're hoping that we can might maybe move in a direction where we can sort of send a blanketed response to somebody in your area because we connect with your zip code. We see that you're out of funds. We send them something and then maybe you let us know in the future, okay, we're ready to accept referrals again. But at this time, we don't have that set up. You know, it's my hope that we can. So unfortunately, you've gotta be the bad guy and you gotta let them know, hey, you know, we are a volunteer driven organization. You know, we uh, have run out of funds for the fiscal year. We'd like you to check back in in a couple of months, you know, and give them a time frame. Just to make sure they let them know, don't let them, you know, I think people want to just hear from you. They just want to receive a response. They want to know that the referral has been received and that, you know, either they are or are not going to get help at that time. And then, um, you know, some people will, will start a queue 
Some of you, I know you have so many people asking for help and you have a big service area, a queue may not be feasible for you, but some of you are in a smaller area and can start a queue. And, and then when you do have funding, you can sort of start at the beginning at the top of the queue and go down and see if folks still need assistance. A lot of times people will find another way to get the help um, if they have to wait long enough. I think you guys have all noticed that, I'm sure. Um, and I think I'd mentioned if somebody's not in your club service area, please just refer it back to us and we'd be happy to, um, uh, to help with that. Or you can refer them back to the, our online referral form and they can go ahead and, and re resubmit a referral so we can get them to the correct club. And if you're receiving a request and you're not the sight and hearing chair, let us know. We are only as good as the information we receive. And sometimes we receive the information and it's only as good as me putting it in the database. So if I've forgotten and I need a reminder, let me know, okay? Um, a lot of you, I know, um, you know, Carol, you work with a population oftentimes homeless. Um, there are other folks that you'll work with, maybe agencies in your area who serve uh, mentally ill or, um, you know, folks who are in rehabilitation um, programs. And sometimes the folks are not easy to get a hold of and it's difficult to, you know, communicate with them. And, you know, it's, it can be really challenging. Um, and I think that if you have any issues, you can always reach out to us and we can kind of help sort of um, navigate that situation. It's also really great if there's a social worker or a family member that can help them. So if you can maybe suggest to them, hey, you know, we work with this um, agency, you might want to contact that agency and see if they would be able to help you, you know, access this program. Because it's going to be really difficult for some folks to go through this. It's, um, it seems easy to us, but, um, you know, getting their proof of income, mailing something to you, I mean, gosh, it's just, it, it doesn't seem difficult, but for the folks that we're serving, you know that some of those steps, every single thing they have to do is, is, is a barrier for them. And this isn't the only assistance most likely that they're actually asking for, because if they're homeless, they're, they need assistance with, um, you know, food, clothing, um, you know, housing. There's a lot of things that they're in the sort of process. So anything that we can do to sort of help them navigate this system and get them a pair of glasses, hearing aids, I think is just the, be the best thing to do. I will mention because I've talked to some new sight and hearing chair um, club, um, uh, uh, so new sight and hearing chairs, and they say, you know, Melinda, I've contacted this person a couple of times and I never heard back. My sort of thinking is there's a ball in their court and there's a ball in your court. So if you've got their application and you need to do something with it, ball's in your court. If you've sent them the approval or you've sent them the application, the ball's in their court. And if you have the time and you're able to, you know, if you're able to call and say, hey, I sent you that application. Did you get it? Do you need any help? That's great. Um, but after you've done that, you know, then it's up to them to sort of go ahead and make those those, um, you know, make that effort and, and, and do that work. Um, it's really, you know, it depends on your capacity and some of you are working. Some of you have a really busy life. All of you have a very busy life. I'm always amazed at all you all are doing. So you don't have time to be chasing someone down and most likely they have already received assistance somewhere else. So don't beat yourself up over it. If you, if you don't get something back or you don't hear, hear back, I think a lot of you are nodding, you know this, like, so um, but it's important for new sight and hearing chairs because I, I see them trying so hard and, and it's, it's just best to sort of think of it that way. Are there any questions so far? And if we've, um, if we've gained some more folks, just to let you know this is being recorded. And if you have any questions, just interrupt me, let me know. So we do a screen, it's sort of a, a program overview. And I've made a mention here that the community health screening program is on pause. We are doing school vision screenings, and um, those are actually, we've just started this week, and seems like they're all going really well. Um, we've got a new process for that, and we'll kind of talk about that a little, a little further here. But this just gives somebody like a really basic kind of, you know, a one-line um, description of each of the programs that, that, we, um, that we do here at the foundation in partnership with you and the Lions. Um, and so we are going to go through some of these. And I've got Katie here. Um, many of you know that um, Kareth Vance, who was with us for 10 years, actually 11 years, um, took the executive director position over at the Hull Foundation in Sandy. 
which serves um, blind and, and visually uh, low vision um, folks. And it's an incredible organization. If you're not familiar with it, please take some time to look it up. And I know that Kareth would love to come and speak with your club and be a guest speaker. And she has a really great presentation. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting to learn about Hull Park and to learn about um, from her fresh eyes, you know, what that organization does. And I'd be happy to give you her um, information as well. Um, but anyway, when she left, it, it obviously left a big void here. Kareth was wearing, I want to say 15, 17 hats. When we sort of looked at everything she was doing, we were thinking how in the world was she doing all of that? So she was managing the patient care program, the KX program, v VSP, doing our payroll. Um, she was doing our Salesforce database. I could go on and on and on and on. So it made sense to, um, to use this as an opportunity to sort of put like things with like things. So we've got our optical department and Katie is our optical director. So she is now um, uh, going to be in, in uh, your contact for KEX Kids Fund, which offers uh, glasses and exams for children. And she's also gonna be your contact for the VSP program, the gift certificate program, which we're seeing some changes with that. And I know a lot of you have been waiting with bated breath because the certificates have been out for quite a while. So there's gonna be some changes with that. And I think she's, um, she's excited to sort of, to see, uh, see that program um, shift and grow. And she's also in charge of our Leap Optical Lab. So all of those uh, orders that um, you are going through your local optical providers and um, the processing orders through our Leap Lab, uh, she, she's managing our, our, our staff here um, that, are, that are taking care of those as well as our optical shop here. And if you're ever in town, stop by and check out, check out the frames because I promise optical has some really great frames. And um, I took over the patient care program. Um, I'm still uh, working with the ROAR hearing assistance program, which is uh, just so near and dear to my heart. And also working with some of our funds um, that are available in different areas and communities. So um, our, this is the income guidelines and we update this every year. And if you see at the very top there, there's a website. You can always just look up, you know, what the income guidelines are. If maybe you misplaced the sheet, you can look it up online. It gives you the 100% of the federal poverty guidelines. So just double the numbers and there you are. And then if you need the annual, just multiply it by 12 and there you go. So we've got our school vision screening program and I might actually pick on Steve and ask you, how is everything, uh, how did everything go last year with some of your screenings with the, um, the tripod and, and doing the six foot uh, distance with the school vision screenings? Well, the uh, few that I did do last year, they were very limited because most of the uh, screenings got canceled but I really liked using the tripod. It seemed to make screenings easier. Setup time was a little bit longer and takedown time was a little bit longer. But we seemed to, with the cameras held steady on top of a tripod, we were able to, I think, to capture the screening faster and easier than with the handheld spots. I think that's great. And, and to be honest, hopefully you all will get sick a little less now. <laughs> you're in less contact with the kiddos. I remember Caitlin was sick quite a bit going out to those screenings with little colds from those sweet, sweet little children that bring you lots of germs. Um, so, but we're glad that we're able to still be doing these school vision screenings. Um, they're really, really important. Um, you know how, how crucial it is to children learning in school uh, to be able to see better. So, we're really excited that, um, that we've come up with some great solutions to, um, to sort of combat the, the environment right now. And, and, and yeah, this is gonna be a really busy screening um, pro, uh, a year. So we've got a lot of screenings. If any of you are interested in volunteering, um, we actually, uh, the folks here, we have Phoenix um, Chambers who, who joined our team last year um, and they prefer they, them pronouns. And we have Matt Phillips, who many of you have worked with and I talked about, created our wonderful referral system. So you can reach out to either of them and they can help get you connected um, and make sure that you have the, the, um, the, the, the screening events and the schedules, as well as any, if you know your, who your, your local uh, field staff member is from our foundation, our school, school vision screening screeners, you can reach out to them as well. 
So we talk about our mission care, um, mission, mission cataract and patient care programs. So mission, patient care, now that I've gotten to step in, I get to learn a little bit more. Patient care helps with so many things. Um, pterygium uh, removals, which is a growth um, on the eye, um, helps with autologous serum eye drops, which uh, is for somebody who has really severe dry eyes that's actually impacting their vision. Uh, we help with uh, retinal um, injections. Uh, we help with um, just recently uh, medical contact lenses. They're called scleral lenses. Um, these are just sort of things that um, when there's no other options and um, somebody is impoverished and not able to afford, this program, I mean, helps so many people um, with all of these uh, incredible vision and hearing related surgeries and procedures. Um, we also assist through our Mission Cataract program. We partner with uh, incredible providers all over the state and we actually are able to offer free cataract surgeries for folks who qualify. So most folks um, you know, who are eligible for um, uh, benefits can have OHP access. Um, so those folks, um, you know, they may have most of, if not all of their cataract surgery will be covered by their OHP coverage, but there's sometimes there's just a copay left over, $400 for one eye, $200 for the second, and maybe eye drops. And that's something that the patient care program can step in and help. But if they're not eligible and they don't have uh, access to insurance, then Mission Cataract is gonna cover all of the, the assistance for them. Um, and that's been really fun to see folks going through that whole process. So um, in the past, we were required that a Lions Club sign off on the application. And we found that um, we're getting a lot more applications directly from the providers. I work directly with um, providers and they just send me the whole application with the chart notes, with the proof of income. And so it's helpful because they are my contact with that person. It's a safe uh, um, um, partnership with them. The, the patient feels safe with their information, the way that it's been shared. Um, so what I would like to do going forward is, is to let Lions Clubs know if I receive an application that way, I wanna let you know, hey, we received an application in your area for this. Wanna let you know we're gonna review it this next, at this next month's meeting and then let you know what the outcome was so that you can report back to your club that there's been somebody in the area who's been helped with this you know, by your Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. Oh, I see a question. Is that Mike? Go ahead, Mike. Are you there, Mike? I think Mike. Sorry, that was a clap. A clap, or rather. Oh, a clap. Oh, well, my apologies. I got my I got my um, my little hand signals mixed mixed up. Okay. All right. Oh, no, no problem. Um, so we do actually receive quite a few applications directly from the Lions Club, and that's amazing. So the Lions Club has done all that legwork, and they've communicated with the person. They're that trusted, you know, source, that trusted communication. So it's been really wonderful. So I've worked directly with, you know, I pick on Carol quite a bit because she's at the top here, and she she does, you know, has a big service area. But, you know, work directly with Carol to help somebody with um, with a, a patient care mission cataract. Um, um, uh, application. So um, we just look to see that the application is filled out completely. We want to make sure that they've signed all of the sections. We want to make sure they have the medical chart notes available. Uh, we want to make sure, um, you know, similar to a LEAP and ROAR application, those that they have proof of income included, um, that we're matching, you know, checking to see that they are eligible for the program. But And there's some um, specific guidelines in the packet, so you can kind of read through those, and that kind of talks about um, how we operate. And I'm going to actually move it, switch over to Katie, so she can get a little bit of information. I know we've got a lot to talk about, but I'll, I'm going to switch, go over to Katie, so you can chat a little bit about Leap and KEX and other fun optical stuff. Yeah, I guess I'll just start out with talking about KEX since that's the most recent program I've had the opportunity to take over. Um, so just letting you all know, if you have anybody that applies for assistance in your service area that's under the age of 21 and they're enrolled in school, so they could be in a community college, um, as long as they're enrolled in school and under the age of 21, they should be eligible for the KEX Kids Fund. So if you have somebody, um, that is in need, 
um, please, you don't need to be using your club's resources for the kids. Let's reserve that for KEX. Um, and then if you do have somebody like that, just reach out to me and I could provide you with the KEX application. Um, for. And a lot of it's the same information that's asked on the LEAP application. So I might even be able to just take what's on the LEAP application and um, include it on the KEX and it should be good. Um, so KEX is a wonderful program. It provides eyeglasses and hearing aids for kiddos in need. Most of our um, referrals come through the school. So the school counselor or the school um, um, social, like there's usually like a social worker at the school or school nurse. Um, and a lot of the communication is done through the school, which is awesome. So um, once a kid applies and they are um, eligible and we grant them the voucher, then we just mail the voucher or you now email it to the school and then they provide it to the family. So it's a really wonderful program. It's been in existence, um, in existence for quite a while and um, there's lots of funding in there. So don't ever feel bad. Don't say, oh, I don't wanna take money from KEX. There's, there's plenty of funds for us to be able to help kids. And it serves um, kids all over the state of Oregon. It used to just be wherever the radio station 1190 KEX reached, but now it's all over the state of Oregon and several counties in Washington. So um, even if you, you know, get a bug in your ear about a kid that lives somewhere in Washington, please check with me to see if um, they might be eligible for KEX. Um, I think that's all I want to share about KEX. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to email or always you could put something in the chat box and I'll kind of address that. Um, for people over the age of tw 21 and older, um, as you know, in 2010-ish, Oregon Health Plan dropped vision coverage for many adults. So I think there is like an age gap um, for adults between like the age of 21, like to maybe 60, like 64, 65, until they are they qualify for other um, resources. But there is that huge gap of adults in need for vision care because Oregon, Oregon Health Plan dropped vision coverage for people. So unless somebody has a medical need, so if somebody has diabetes, they might qualify for their insurance to provide a medical eye exam, which is wonderful. Um, so always check if you get an application for somebody, um, they may have other, um, usually we're asking now the providers to check to see if they're eligible um, for their insurance to pay for their eye exam. So it's not your club. But LEAP is, um, was a program intended to provide assistance to clubs to help people in your community. So you might have a great partnership with a local provider that you refer your folks to and that works out great. Maybe the provider gives you a discounted um, rate for the eye exam and eyeglasses and that's working wonderfully for you. But in order to meet that demand, um, when Oregon Health Plan dropped vision coverage, um, we started pulling other resources to try and help your clubs. So one of the resources, a big one that you all know about is VSP, the certificate program. Um, it's through Vision Service Plan, a huge insurance conglomerate, and they were generous enough um, through the Lions Club International to provide us gift certificates back when this happened, you know, 2012-ish. And we were, VSP was not able to keep up with the demand that Oregon had for people in need. I think we passed out over 3,000 vouchers for VSP in just a few months. And then just overnight, VSP said, sorry, we can't meet your demand. And so they no longer were able to provide those eye exams for us or the vouchers for exams and eyeglasses. And so we're back at the the ground again, just like, okay, what are we gonna do? And then Kelly Asbra, who was the eyeglass coordinator at Coffee Creek Correctional Facility, um, she taught the um, women at the prison um, optics. They have a lab there where they make all the eyeglasses for um, inmates in the state of Oregon. Um, and they also recycle all of the used eyeglasses through our Lions Eyeglass Recycling Center. It's an amazing pro program and partnership that we have with Coffee Creek. But Kelly gave the idea to the foundation, to your Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation, to build their own optical finishing lab so that we can provide high quality, low cost eyeglasses for people in need so we can control the quality. Everybody's getting consistent glasses because what also we were finding is some people, because they lived in, you know, maybe Klamath Falls and their club had a, you know, a ton of funds. I don't think that's the case, but just an example. 
then they're able to provide people with transition glasses or progressives, you know, the low line bifocals or anti-reflective coating. And then a club like the, um, maybe the Portland Lloyd Lions Club, maybe they had a huge list of people in need and they could only provide basic eyeglasses for people. Uh, it was just so across the board what people were receiving. And so our idea behind the Leap Lab is that everybody would get great, amazing eyeglasses and it'd be consistent. So across the board, people are getting exactly what they need, glasses to provide sight so that they can get that job or um, you know, be able to see their grandchildren again. And so we, back in 2014, we applied for a grant through Lions International and built um, one of the first ever charitable optical finishing labs. And um, we've been operating since we received the grant and we've been operating since 2015. And we work with Lions Clubs like yourself. We work with the Milwaukee Lions Clubs and we work with um, um, providers all throughout the state where when you have a client that applies for vision services, as long as we have that partnership set up, let's say, for instance, we've, I'm just picking on Carol because I'm a Milwaukee Lion, so I'm partial to picking on Carol. So we work with the Milwaukee Lions Club and we have a partnership with Moreland Vision Source, which is a, a local provider in near the Milwaukee area. So Carol gets a recipient, an application and she says, great, you're approved and sends them to Moreland Vision Source and Moreland Vision provides the eye exam. And then they also have a frame kit. Let me see if I have one here. There's an example of a kit. So this is what the provider has on hand. And it's a kit that right now it consists of 10 different styles. Um, all really nice styles, but we are revamping it. Just so you guys know, we're going to be offering 15 styles um, for people offered in two different color options. So um, we'll probably make that change in the um, beginning of next year. Um, we're just being really careful about the frames that we pick out. We want everybody to have a really nice selection. So, um, so that person goes to Moreland Vision, they get their eye exam, they pick out their frames, the optician takes the measurements and then um, the provider faxes or emails us the order form and we make the glasses here in our lab here in Portland, Oregon. And once we make the glasses, we have two to three people checking every single pair of glasses that goes out to make sure that they're perfect. And then they get shipped in a protective hard case and they get a cleaning cloth and then it goes to the provider and then the provider dispenses it to the patient. And I always like to say um, it, this partnership, once it's established and set up, it doesn't look any different from the perspective of the Lions Club because a provider can use any lab that they want to. It's just that they would be using our lab instead of their other lab that they may have and it reduces costs. So we're able to charge Lions Clubs just $40 for single vision, 50 for aligned pifocal and 60 for aligned trifocal. They do get plastic or polycarbonate lenses we don't upcharge for polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is a high um, impact resistant material and it's wonderful for, we put all children in polycarbonate because it's safer. And um, also if somebody is very low vision or blind in one eye, we wanna put them in polycarbonate to protect their good eye as best that we can. We do not allow any upgrades um, just because a patient wants it. So if somebody says, I want transitions because I'm out in my garden all the time, well, unfortunately, you know, we put the heavy on the people and the provider helps us put the heavy. So it's taken off of the Lions Club's plate. You guys are helping so many people. You don't have the funds to be able to pay $400 for somebody pairs of glasses. And then, you know, the next person comes along and they're just getting the basic. So, but unless somebody needs something because, because of a medical reason, there has been um, times where we've gotten orders where, um, somebody does need transitions or a tint or an anti-reflective coating because they're very light sensitive. We're happy to do that. We just check in with the doctor to make sure that it's medically necessary. And then we check with the club sight and hearing chair to make sure they're fine with any additional costs. And um, yeah, we, I think one of our best success stories um, was a few years ago, a gentleman, he had multiple sclerosis. So he had really bad balance issues. And he had about 10 diopters of base in prism in each eye. And prism, um, if you're not familiar with it, most people, if you're prescribed it, it, might be one to three diopters of prism. Prism is our 
a unit of measurement. So one to three diopters at prism might be standard for somebody that is prescribed prism. And this guy needed 10, which makes the lens super thick. But what it does is it draws the eye to where they need to be to see clearly and to not see double or whatever issues they have going on. And so this guy also needed um, transitions because he was very light sensitive. And I called around and um, just to get some perspective on how much these glasses may have cost elsewhere. And they would have cost upwards of six, seven or eight hundred dollars. And we were able to make them for the Beaverton Club, I think, for 80. So um, very affordable, a great way to um, provide services for your community. So if you are interested in working with our lab, you don't have to. We always like to say we're just a tool in your tool belt. Right now, we work with about 70 Lions Clubs and about 80 providers throughout the state. We may even have a provider in your area that we work with, and we might be working with another local club. Um, so we might already have a great partnership established with a provider, or if you want us to entertain working with a different provider, I'm happy to call. We can have a, um, a phone conference with you and the provider, or if you're not too far away, we could probably travel and um, have a nice sit down meeting and um, pitch the program to the provider, but um, it's wonderful. And the other um, change too is um, like, as you see in the uh, frequently asked question pages, we do ask that the um, applicant or the client pays a $20 fitting fee. And that $20 goes to the provider and it's to compensate the optician for their time it takes to do the fitting. We put a lot of care in the eyeglasses, the frames that we um, have offered in the kit because um, we we know that there's something for everybody in there. Most people can find two or three frames that would work for them. And it just cuts down the time tremendously because I don't know if you guys have gotten feedback from providers where you've sent clients and, you know, sometimes, I mean, a lot of you are wearing glasses. It could take forever to pick out eyeglasses and you're working, you know, they might have like a limited selection that falls under the price point that the club is able to pay. And then they're looking over at the high end, like, Ray-Ban glasses or the Gucci frames or something, and the optician has to steer them back to the frames that are limited to the selection, whereas in this kit, it's nice and concise, and it's very black and white, like this is what you get. Um, so it's the fitting shouldn't take more than 15, 20 minutes, um, but that $20 is to compensate them for the time because we know that the provider isn't getting any markup. They're not putting any, they're not getting anything for the eyeglasses, whereas um, if they're using their own lab and their own own resources and frames, they do build in a little bit of markup there. Um, but since they're not getting that, we do offer that $20 fitting fee. And that also we have found um, it really cuts down on clients um, calling and saying, I broke my glasses or I lost my glasses. We have found um, a little bit more, um, I guess, for lack of better words, responsibility with the um, the. Um, generosity that they've been given because um, they've put in a little skin in the game. They've given that $20. So they feel like they've given something for what they're getting. Um, so again, if you, um, if what you have is working great with your provider and you're not working with our lab, awesome. We're always here. Even if you have questions optical related, if you're like, Hey, the doctor said this, and I'm not sure about it, call me. And I'm happy to help walk you through or talk technical stuff about glasses and what they're saying the client needs, I'm happy to do so. Um, because you know, sometimes you go to the optometrist and they're like, Penny, you spend a lot of time out in your garden or you like to ride your bike, you would really benefit from transition lenses. And then maybe you walk out of the exam room and you have in the mind that you have to get transition lenses because the doctor said it or they recommended it. It's in the recommendations on your prescription. That's just them trying to talk you into it, which it may or may you know, not benefit you. It probably would benefit you, but it's not necessarily medically necessary. So if you have any questions like that come up, please call or email me. Email isn't the easiest way to get a hold of me because um, currently I do work from home three days a week. I'm in the office two days a week. Um, and so email is usually the best, but I'm happy to um, talk with you about anything optical related. Um, and then um, if you would like me to talk to your provider that you're working with to see if they wanna work with our lab, I'm happy to do that as well. So please get in touch with me. And then, oh, big hot topic, VSP vouchers. Um, 
there will be um, some more information coming out, but we are looking at kind of revamping the program, making it easier to access and equitable for Lions Clubs. Right now, it's um, only available for Portland Metro Lions Clubs, and then I think there's one provider down in Klamath Falls currently that accepts the VSP vouchers. Um, but we are hoping to expand our network of providers that take the vouchers. So be on hold for that, and we'll give you more information. But that's um, and there's just changes within VSP and the LCIF where we obtain the glasses from or the vouchers from um, that are out of our control. So we're just trying to relook at it and make sure that we're being fair and equitable and sharing these vouchers far and wide to all the Lions Clubs in need because we know there's not just need in Portland. So thank you for your patience with that. Thank you, Katie. Sure. Um, hey, everybody, I actually forgot that uh, my coworker, Jessica, uh, is here, and she wanted to let you all know about a Halloween co um, uh, contest that we're doing, and there's actually a special um, price because you all are here. Um, Jessica, do you want to chat really quickly about that? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, if you haven't had a chance to meet me yet, I am Jessica Baker. I am the new uh, data and events manager here at the foundation. And um, we do have a couple of events coming up. I have to give the quickest little shout out for golf. Our golf tournament starts uh, this Friday on the 10th. It runs through the 19th. Uh, I know a couple of you have already signed up either to donate or to play. So thank you to those of you who have. But we have another event coming up uh, starting September 22nd, which is a Halloween photo contest. It's the Pets, Plants, and Pumpkins. So there are three categories, one for Halloween pet photos, one for Halloween plant photos, and then pumpkins, which is kind of any other Halloween thing you can think of. Costumes, treats, decorations, haunted houses, spooky forests, any of that. And because we are so grateful for you as sight and hearing chairs and um, what you do to help us uh, help others, we are offering you a two for one special. So normally uh, our contest, it's going to be $15 for one photo entry, but for sight and hearing chairs, we are offering you $15 for two photo entries. Um, I will be sending a little bit of information to all of your emails later today about that. Um, but we'd love if you guys want to support the foundation, uh, have some spooky holiday fun, uh, and get a little bit of a deal out of it. So if anybody has questions, my email will be coming out later this, uh, later today, hopefully. Um, and I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing some fun photos from you guys. Thanks, Jessica. I appreciate that. Um, and I know some of you have the cutest uh, animals. I, I'm thinking about Rest Chase and your cute little pup. <laughs> Because that pup is the cutest. Okay, so um, let's go back here. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because I, I heard that it was a bit small. Um, is there any questions so far? We're going to go really quickly through some of the rest of this. And I want to leave some time at the end because I want to get tips from folks. I know some of you have been sight and hearing chairs for a very long time. And I'd love to hear. I'm a sight and hearing chair for my club. I actually like to hear your tips. So um, I'm uh, being able to work with the low vision clinic. Um, this is something that um, folks can coordinate directly with um, the foundation to help uh, low, low vision students. And we work with Dr. J.P. Lowry, who's incredible. I don't know if you've had a chance to meet him, but he's a really amazing uh, uh, gentleman who's worked with us for quite a while now, travels all over Oregon, and he works with special needs students um, and um, assists with, um, with um, low vision devices. So um, it's been really gratifying to step in and, and start to work with him. This is such an incredible program, and I'm excited to learn more and watch, watch him work. But um, we also have our Lions Eyeglass Recycling Center, which is one of 19 around the world. And our um, amazing Tracy Brown is the, um, manages the, the LERC program. I'm sure that you've had glasses that need to come up to the foundation before, and you've coordinated with her. Uh, she's also the one, whenever we receive any uh, donations from folks. Um, she's the one who actually sends them a donation letter, um, thanking them and um, and th letting them know, you know, what great work, um, you know, the Lions are doing with these recycled um, glasses. And thanks to all of you and your clubs who tirelessly go around town and collect these glasses and have 
been head first into the boxes and had had the bottoms break out and all of these things. And so we really appreciate all you're doing and um, and always, you know, give us let give us a holler if you have any suggestions or feedback or if you have questions. Um, we're always happy to, to work with you with that. And we really appreciate all you do for collecting glasses and hearing aids. Um, we also have our ROAR hearing assistance program. And I know I've worked with all of you before with ROAR. Um, and we have had such a great um, opportunity to work with new um, hearing aid manufacturers. When I first started at the foundation, we were working with RJS Acoustics and only working with um, refurbished hearing aids, which are, you know, can be really great. I mean, sometimes somebody walks out of a provider's office with a nicer hearing aid than the actual provider. Um, but sometimes they're sort of sticking out. They're a little bit janky. You know, they're a little, they've been worn. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not as consistent. Um, and RGS Acoustics, I'm going to be really honest with you all. And I think I've been honest with you before in emails about this. They've really struggled through the pandemic. They've had to lay off some of their folks. Um, they've had to move services out of house. I mean, it's taking two to three months for folks to get their hearing aids. So I've talked to the providers who work with RGS and have really kind of said, you know, if you can, let's work with some of these newer hearing aids because RGS is is really struggling to keep up. And I hate seeing somebody who's paid, you know, whatever fees or is eligible for free hearing aids, having to wait two to three months to get their hearing aids. It's really, really tough to watch. So I just wanted you to be mindful that we may, you know, we may be able to work with RGS for a long time and we may not be able to work with them for very much longer. And just, um, just to really depends on how they're able to, to come out of this, um, come out of this situation. Um, if you all have questions about ROAR, you can definitely let me know. We have a new uh, partner. we working with Phonak Hearing Aids, and I'm getting sort of mixed reviews from providers. Some providers are really excited about Phonak, and some providers, um, do, you know, say that there's some hoops that Phonak make them sort of jump through. So I'm working with our new rep to make sure that it's easy for our providers, if they want to work with Phonak, that they're able to, and um, making sure that, that this is a, gr a good option for, for folks that we work with. Um, just so you know, if somebody asks you, um, the new hearing aids that we're offering, we work with um, Sonic Innovation, Starkey, and Phonak. And I mean, on average, those hearing aids are about uh, $12.50. If you were going to purchase them, you know, the, um, uh, the fair market value would be about $1,250 per hearing aid, upwards to $2,500 per hearing aid. If somebody were going to go into a provider's office and purchase those, so, I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a deal, really, you know, for folks. And I love that because I don't think that because you're, um, you're low income or because you're applying for this program, I don't think that you deserve anything less than the best. So I'm really, really pleased that folks are walking away with hearing aids that um, a lot of them um, have access to the loop technology, um, which I don't know if, if anyone has questions about that. It's a really cool option and it connects directly to your, your, hear, your hearing aid. A lot of folks who go to church um, who, um, who participate in, um, you know, uh, senior activities, there's a loop system built into those um, environments. So they can just kind of, it connects to the T cell in their battery, in their hearing aid. So they're able to pick up and it's almost like somebody's literally talking directly to them in their ear. There's also Bluetooth capabilities with some of our um, new hearing aids, which is a huge plus for the, for folks that we work with. Um, something that's really important to me is that we can get rechargeable hearing aids. And I guarantee you that I'm um, bothering, I mean, talking to the manufacturers all the time, trying to get that as an option because batteries are, like we said, everything is a barrier for people and purchasing new batteries, although they don't seem like much to you and I, they can be really, a, they can be a hardship and that can really limit somebody from wearing their hearing aids. So we're just trying to limit those barriers. But if you have any questions about the process and working with a local provider, let me know. And um, it's been wonderful to work with some of you um, to try to get some new providers on board. It's been really awesome. Um, I just get very thrilled when we have a new provider who wants to work with a local Lions Club. I just, that's something that just um, brings me great thrill. So, but we also work with our Roar Mobile Clinic and, um, you know, Dr. Landsberg, there's a chance that he might, um, move his practice and he's really missing his family in East Coast. I want to be really transparent, you know, that um, he's been talking about selling the practice in South Coast and maybe moving back East. 
Um, so if that happens, you know, we've got a couple other providers who I know have been wanting to do more mobile work. So we're really excited to, to chat with them and see what in what capacity and to see how they that might work. Um, you know, there are just areas in Oregon, and I know some of you live in those areas where there isn't a provider who's available um, to partner with your club. And it's just, it's got to be really tough when somebody comes to you and they're in desperate need for hearing aids and you're not able to assist because we don't have a provider in that area. Um, a new thing that we are actually just um, working on, we're going to get some sample um, uh, over-the-counter hearing aids. And you've probably heard uh, about this that, you know, um, over-the-counter hearing aids, they're just a kind of they used to be called hunter's ears where you would put a basic amplifier in and it would sort of amplify everything. They come a long way and they've now been approved by the FDA um, to be able to be sold over the counter to folks. A lot of people who, who you know, that your Lions Clubs are helping have just mild to moderate hearing loss. And so just amplification is really, you know, would really be a benefit to them. So I'm looking into purchasing, you know, a, a bulk sort of um, order of these over-the-counter hearing aids for, for folks that are in um, areas where we don't have a provider available. Obviously, it's always best. I mean, Katie can talk to you about how much, um, you know, she sees folks who purchase uh, glasses off the internet, you know, um, they get their prescription and they, they purchase glasses, you know, from Xenia or, or some of those other places, right, Katie? And it's, it, it can be a band-aid, it's gonna help them, but it's gonna be way better for them to go through a professional and actually get the assistance and get fitted properly. It's the same with hearing aids, but when you don't have any other options and your Lions Club is gonna to wanna to help somebody, I think this is gonna be a great option for people. So we're looking into that and they're gonna send us a sample and we're gonna make a couple of people here be guinea, guinea pigs and test them out and let us know how it compares with a real hearing aid. So um, more on that and that should be available. Um, to Lions Club soon. So I just wanted to kind of take the rest of the time and, and I wanted to sort of pick, pick brains. I wanted to do something fun and I don't know if everybody is able to participate, but um, I think I know Penny, we may have lost Penny. I was gonna say, I thought maybe Penny might be our longest running uh, sight and hearing chair here. Um, Melinda Palmer, can, are you able to talk Melinda Palmer? How long have you been a sight and hearing chair? And she may not be able to. Well, okay. I'm just gonna just ask anybody who would like to sort of give me a, a big tip. I'm just gonna actually go around the screen here. So first one is Mike Rudolph. I'm gonna ask, what's a big tip that you have since you've you've been doing this? Um, what's what's sort of the biggest standout that's been helpful that you've learned and you've have the aha moment. I think working with you, Melinda, has been been the biggest thing that uh, helped me along. Well, I paid him to say that, so I'll send you twenty bucks uh, later. You accept Venmo, I hope. <laughs> How about oh, Mark Myers? You have been a sight and hearing chair for a long time, Mark. Give us a good tip. Wow, let's see, a good tip. Um, but what, um, let's see. How long have been this program? How long, uh, I, oh, how long I have know. you been a sight and hearing chair, Mark? Probably 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you're in uh, Florence. Yeah, right, we're in Florence. And we do have a good provider here. Um, and uh, we've always keep communications open. Uh, I think that's the biggest tip I can give you uh, in everything you do. I mean, especially with providers uh, and kind of, you know, be sure you go back to them and make sure that everything's working for them uh, because if it's not working for them, it's not gonna be successful. That's a great tip. Um, Henry Miller, I know you've been a sight and hearing chair off and on for a while. Can you give us a good tip? And you're from Springfield. Yes, <clears throat> I'm from Springfield, Oregon. Uh, well, actually, I was uh, sight and hearing for a while while Don uh, Herschel was uh, before he passed away. So about three or four years there. And then uh, uh, then Larry Barnett took over for a year. And now he's our president. And so I took it back until we find another one that uh, would like to take this over. Um, I think one of the, the uh, highlights of my uh, doing this in the last six months is that 
I had a gentleman that was very strong about not giving me his address. He did not, uh, he did not want to pay the $20, uh, several things like that. And then so I said, okay, all right, we'll work it with you. And it made everything so easy where he went in and got his glasses and I mean, everything. And he called me back and he thanked me for him. And he says, I'm sending $20 into you because I told him that we use that $20 to go to the next person. But that made me feel pretty good there that we, we did that. But actually I agree with, uh, um, I believe it was Mike, that uh, you make it easy. I mean, it just, if I have a question, I can call you up and bingo, it's, it's there. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's nice of you to say. And thanks for I your really tip. I really appreciate the hamburger that you bought me. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did get a quick question from, I'm sorry, I'm right next to this door and it's quite loud. Um, Dorothy Gann, uh, Nesteca. Uh, so you asked about the Miracle Ear. Um, uh, so we worked with Miracle Ear before, and we created a sort of um, understanding with them. Um, I'm going to be really blunt. Uh, Miracle Ear can be a bit shady. Um, so what they do is um, you have to have an extensive sort of application process for somebody to be um, approved. They want to see your bank statements. They want to see everything. And then if they decide that you're truly eligible, then they, they do offer you free hearing aids. Um, you pay, a, a non, it's, it was a non-refundable, I believe it's a $250 non-refundable application fee. But because they're working with a Lions Club, what, what we worked out is that the Lions Club sends the check for that $250, or I think it's 150. I, I apologize, I'm kind of blanking. And then if the person is approved, then the, the check is not, it's waived. It's not, it's not cashed. Um, if the person isn't approved, I believe that the check is then cashed. So do you know what I mean? Um, I've only seen one person be approved. Um, and most of the time what Miracle Ear does is they have them go through that whole process and they say, oh, you've got a couple of pennies to rub together. We're gonna set you up with a, uh, with a monthly payment system. So they set them up and then they, they're paying for the rest of their life on their hearing aids. I'm sorry if I sound a bit uh, jaded about Miracle Ear, but you know I haven't had the greatest experiences. There's a couple that we work with actually. I know that um, Ray isn't here because he works with the Miracle Ear in, um, up near Astoria in Warrington. And he's an incredible provider. I mean, the, the Miracle Ear provider over there is incredible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one. Um, so you were asking if we still work with the one in Tillamook, Dorothy, and we do. So if you need some help, we can chat with them and we can, we can see, um, you know, how well they'll, they'll, if they'll play nicely, lack of a better way to say that. And I asked you for your tip and Dorothy says, do your best to get the program to work for your applicant. Right now I am working with a gentleman who has been struggling, a struggle to deal with, but I think he and I are finally reaching the goal line. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. Sometimes we are all nodding because there are some folks who are it's a little more difficult to deal with. And I think for me, it's just been like realizing that they're in a situation where their their guard is up. They feel like they've been backed into a corner. They're working very, very hard to get assistance for themselves. And it's making them a bit grouchy. So to just sort of say, I hear you. I see that you are in a terrible position. I know that it's hard to ask for help. I know that this isn't something you've had to do before, and I, and I realize this, but let me help you. You know, let's just be real. Let's communicate and let me help you. I'm going to ask, um, I, so Michael Kenny, I know that you haven't been a sight and hearing chair for too long, but I know that you're, you're able to speak, so I'm going to pick on you. Well, we're going to pass. We're going to go over to Carol. Carol hasn't been a sight and hearing chair for too terribly long, but I remember you taking it over from Noreen, and I said, you've got some big shoes to fill, and oh my gosh, you have filled those shoes and then some, Carol. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I, Noreen, she walks by the house every day, and if I have a question, it's like, Noreen, I need some help, and so I've, I've been fortunate to have her as well as, as all of you, yeah. So, Katie, all of you, all of you at the foundation have been fantastic to work with, and, and I think the biggest um, 
the biggest thing is to stay in touch with everybody that just contacts you and make sure you give them a call back and say, hey, how you doing? Do you need help filling out your application? Um, some of the applications don't come back for two or three months. And usually weekly, I'll make a call to everybody like, you know, do you need some help? And, and they really appreciate it. So that's my best suggestion. <laughs> Well, and I notice you're very, very organized. I know we're running out of time here, but um, I noticed that when Carol and I have an issue with somebody, she sends back and she's got the date. She's got the communication. It's really short and sweet. It's not a novel. It's just very short and sweet. This is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. So if you have any issues with somebody, she just has any communication just listed right there and she can kind of send it back and we can just sort of compare and, and we can say, well, yeah, this, this was on me or this is on them and, and we can kind of go from there. And that, that really concise communication has been really, I think, great, Carol. I can see that's a big benefit. Yeah, I set up an Excel spreadsheet and as they come in, I'll document everything that's been said. So that's been very helpful for me. Getting old, you know, is uh, my memory is not there. So I got a better habit in writing. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if there's any more questions and I thought we'd have some more folks uh, joining us. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing another one of these to see if we can catch some of those folks who weren't able to make it today. But any questions before we depart? Um, Mike did have a question about the service area in Lyle, Washington, if Olshift, if they can access Olshift resources, if you want to address that. Oh, I apologize. Um, we must have missed that. Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, that is a good question. Um, you know, they're kind of out there all by themselves. Um, I, they're, in, they're in District 19 or something, and that we help them with site screening. We go over and do site screening to help them out, but they're just kind of forgotten club in their district because they're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and mm -hmm. I was just wondering if I might reach out to them and, and let them know that they might contact you guys if, if in fact, some of those things could help. Because we only deal right now with people in, in Oregon. Our, so our, is it is the Lions Club that's, that's there and that's we partner with them for the vision screenings? Yeah, well, we do that right now. We go over and do the help them with vision screenings. But I'm wondering if they could get in touch with you as far as to get assistance on glasses so they don't have to use, you know, a retail provider. Let's um we'll chat about that and Katie and I will we'll see what we can do. Um yeah, if you if you can send us a contact, that would be really yep. helpful, Mike. Yep. I'll do it. Okay. Yeah, Katie. because um some of those those Washington clubs are just literally right over the river there. And well, um, that's the case here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks for mentioning that. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I think that's it. Thanks for all you do. Um, you all are so amazing to work with and I appreciate you taking the time and, and um, we'll be in touch.